Phoebe. And Eddie. With Collard Valley Cooks. We're in Collard Valley today in Polk County, Georgia, in Eddie's Kitchen. We are actually in the home he grew up in, and he's remodeled it, of course. And this is uh, going to be a recipe on a delicious prime rib roast. The first thing I'm going to show you is when you get a prime rib, this is a, a prime rib roast that does not have the bones in it. You can see at one time they were in... Now, a, a beautiful prime rib roast is a bone-in prime rib roast, but they're hard to find, and I waited a little long to get one. So uh, we had to settle for a uh, without bone loin. This is a ribeye. We are going to make this in the oven, so anybody can do this at home, okay? So if you got an oven, you can make this. So I'm going to get busy and show you guys how I like to trim part of this off. We just... Um, we take some of the excess. When you get a prime rib roast, you're, you're going to see one side's going to have a what's called a fat cap over the top of it, and the other side's just all meat. So you'll, you'll feel right in here, there, there's going to be a, a, a little bit of a crease. It's very soft, and then it gets to a very hard piece of fat right along this edge. So I like to take that off, and I like to take off the excess if there's any hanging off the edges. I just peel that right off. And um, the muscle on this particular cut of meat, if you'll see, you, it, it goes under this roll of fat right here. So what I like to do is I like to just trim some of this fat away because it's, it's just an awful lot of fat um, to try to render off. And so I just take this real heavy piece of fat off typically before I rub it down and get it ready to go in the oven. You can see how deep that fat is right there. And you don't have to do this. I choose to do this just because I think it's just excess. Um, so I just cut it right along that edge and just peel that right off. And that actually gets a little deeper right in there than the other one did. And you'll take a little bit of meat with it when you do it, and that's okay. I'm gonna take just this little edge right here back off, because I don't, I don't like that heavy fat. That's just nothing but a solid slab of fat that needs to be taken off before you cook. Now, I don't like trimming the majority of the fat here off of it. You want to leave that on your prime rib roast while you cook it because that fat renders and it'll keep your meat moist as it begins to render off. It'll soak into the meat and soak through the meat and it's always cook it and when you want to cook this you want to cook it with the fat cap on the top. I'm going to take my, my two sticks of butter and they need to be soft but not melted. I'm going to put them in the microwave for just a 20 seconds or so and uh, get them softened and then we're going to go over here while that's going and I'm going to grab some I've got a little herb garden going I've got a little bit of oregano I love oregano so I'm just going to take some some of the some of the fresh herbs I've also got a little bit of ro uh, rosemary over here I'm going to take a few sprigs of rosemary and take with it um, I like rosemary, so I'm going to use quite a bit of it. And then I'm going to just take some thyme. I'm just going to take some right off the top. You see, I've just got a good handful of oregano, rosemary, and thyme. I had to go brush my hair. Is that what it was? Yeah. All right. You guys can see now I've, I've, I've pulled the butter out of the microwave. I had it in there for about 20 seconds, That's and it's awesome. just just soft enough to, to mix. So I'm going to set that to the side. Butter you like to buy, or is it just something you buy? I either buy that butter, or I use a European-style butter like Kerrygold or Plugra. Yeah. Um, they seem to have a whole lot less water. In them, they have a whole lot better fat um, content. Content, and I just 
they seem to be richer to me. This is from an American dairy. I'm going to save a few of these to just drop down in the pan. So when we roast it, as it renders some of that fat down into the pan there, it'll mix with that that's down there. And, and so on the rosemary, all you want to do is peel this off. You want to, you want to get rid of the stems. Here, I'll help you. You want to help me, Tammy? Yeah. Because I got a few. And then we're just going to take and chop that up real fine. Make sure you don't get your finger. That would be bad. A little bit. Especially yeah, on a, a day lot. like today. Nobody wants to go to the ER. No, you'd prefer not to do that on holidays. And the last thing that I'm going to put in here is I'm going to put about four or five cloves of garlic. Yep. All right, guys. You can see what I got here. We're just going to mix all this up. And then we're going to dump it right in this butter. And this is going to be our rub that goes on the outside. I'm just going to take it and mix it. Did you notice how much this thing weighed? This one's about 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Around 12 pounds, y'all. Because I know y'all asked that. Are we going to cook it with a thermometer, aren't we, Eddie? Yeah. And it's according to what you like. I, I cook to an internal temperature on a prime rib now. I cook to an internal temperature right in the center to about, 100, <clears throat> uh, about 120 degrees because it's going to cook about 7 or 8 degrees after you take it out of the oven. It'll continue to, the temperature will raise. All right, guys, you can see now we've got the butter mixed up with the fresh herbs. It's got thyme, rosemary, garlic, a little bit of an oregano. Now, I'm gonna use the best tool that I got to put this on. Mm -hmm. And you just take and you just lather it on your loin. And I guess you patted it dry, didn't you? I did. I, I washed it and patted it dry before I ever brought it over here. I want it to stick. Yep. And it, it needs a good coat all the way. But what you want to do is you want to put it in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And what that's going to do is sear the outside. You're going to get a nice crust on the outside of the beef. And then take it out after about 20 minutes. Turn your oven down to about 275 to 250 to 275. And then you're going to cook it to an internal temperature up, as I said, of about 120 degrees on a meat thermometer. It's probably going to take it about two and a half hours at this size. All right, guys. I like to drop, as I showed you a while ago, I've got just a few whole sprigs of rosemary that I like to put down in here. I like to put some onion in there as well. And as this cooks and the fat renders, and in just a minute, I'll put a little beef, beef prop in there as well. In between all of that, you'll get an amazing flavor that comes up from the bottom as it cooks off. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that that's in there real good. I've got that in a roasting pan. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to take salt, coat it well with salt. Again, this is a large piece of loin, so it can take a lot of seasoning. When you look at it, you'll think, golly, Eddie, you're putting a, a lot of seasoning on that. But all the flavor for this prime rib roast is going to be coming from the exterior. So you want to make sure you get a good coating of salt and pepper. Yeah. And Lord of mercy, I did a roast, y'all. And I have had so many people want to know, why in the world you put chicken broth under your roast instead of, or cook your roast with chicken broth instead of beef broth? Because it's what I had in the pantry, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. Sometimes, especially during 
times like to now, but you don't need to run to the grocery store just to get beef broth because you're making some beef. It'll be good with chicken, won't it, Eddie? Oh, it'll be fine. The main thing you want to do, it, it would be good with a little bit of water in it. I mean, yeah, any, I know. anything in the bottom to just start the Give process of that as the fat renders and it goes down in here and this is beginning to steam off with the rosemary and the onion. You just want anything down in the bottom and it don't take much to get it started. We're just going to put a little bit of that down in the bottom. Now, I'm going to take just some, this is just a little bit of steak seasoning actually. It's just a, a beef seasoning that I'm going to sprinkle over. They're going to want to see what it is. That's Longhorns. Longhorns. And then this one, if you can find it, is awesome. It is, it's for beef stew and oxtail. Huh, and I want to taste oxtail it. Oxtail is, is one of my favorite things. Um, and I know a lot of folks think I'm nuts when I say. That's good. But oxtail is wonderful. That's really good, y'all. And that is a good, good, good spiced blend. Now you can see how much a how much spice I have on that thing with the fresh herbs, the fresh garlic. Oh my god, the long one looks just tastes like salt. It's very salty. You can see what we got there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in a 400 degree oven. It's gonna stay there for 20 to 25 minutes till it gets a nice brown exterior. And then I'm gonna pull it out, drop that oven down to 275, and then put it in a 275 oven and it'll take about two and a half hours for it to cook. This is a 400, right? Yeah, the top one's on 400. Yeah. Will you open it for me? Mm -hmm. All right. Team effort. We'll slide it right in there and we'll let it go. Good supper. All right, this has been cooking for probably 30 minutes or so. And while it cooks, this extra rub, that we had left. I'm just gonna take some of that butter and just, just put it on here. I'm just gonna oh, yes, kind of baste it. Way. Oh, I'm sorry. You're being yellow just to say it's just for this one. We're just gonna baste it with a basting brush. I like to do that three or four times as we're as it bakes just to get it just put some of that right on top. Takes it just a minute because it is, it's a little cool in the house, so it, if you let it sit there for just a minute, and then that'll just kind of melt and go right over it, keep it nice and moist. All right, Eddie, what do you think? Oh, are you video? Yes, sir. All right, guys, it's been in here about an hour and a half, almost two hours in. Two what? Hours. Okay. I said hours. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, I'm gonna put the meat thermometer in. <coughs> I told y'all that we wanted to get that at about 120 to 125. On the edge over here, I'm running to almost 140. Dead center. We're gonna be at about 120. And that's about where we want it. So, let me grab this other. I don't know where it went, but I'm gonna take this out because I think it's ready, ready. Excuse me, Melissa. Let me slide that right there. And there's the famous Melissa that all y'all see on Facebook. Oh, I put my glasses and we're just gonna let this. Yeah. We're gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes. It'll continue the temperature. Will continue to raise for about another 10 or 15 minutes. If you cut it right now, all the juice will run out. So you need to. Let it set for about 10 minutes before you cut it, and that'll be wonderful. Up and get it out of here. It's been resting now for about uh, probably 15 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna set that right there, and I'm gonna slice into it and see how it looks. We're just gonna take and cut it right through the center. Kids are going out on the go-kart. Santa came last night. Boy, that's oh, pretty. That is a pretty piece of, meat. of prime rib. I want to taste it. Let me get me a plate. Oh, you got a plate. I've got a plate right there. 
If you'll look in that drawer right over there, Tammy. Right there. What a beautiful piece of prime rib. Well, that's pretty. All right, I wanted to show you guys what's in the bottom of the pan. You know, we had put onions, a little bit of rosemary, and a few things in there before we cooked, and this is just the drippings that was left in the prime rib. Now, I've poured most of this up already into a saucepan right over here, and I'm making an all juice sauce for the prime rib that's been boiling for about, I don't know, five minutes or so. Oh, yeah. We're going to cut that. You're not going outside. Too much more. Oh. We're going to cut that right there. Then we're going to take some of the all juice sauce. And pour right over the top of it. What do you tell her? Thank you. Now. That would be good. That would be awesome. It's always the best, most tender part. And this is the tenderloin side. Give it a whirl. Mm. Delicious. Tastes like prime rib. Yummy. Woo! If you've never made a prime rib for your family for a special occasion, I know they cost a lot of money. So just have everybody pitch in. You need a little bit of money, right? Yeah, yeah. This this prime rib was about $130 for the entire oil. Right. But it'll feed about 15 to 18 people if you cut one inch steaks, which is really thick. Yes, it's plenty of meat. You can slice prime rib thin and feed an abundance of people. Especially with steak sandwich or something. Oh, yeah. With the leftovers, make you some steak sandwiches. But look, y'all, get you one, go in together and get one. And it's better than going to a restaurant. In time it's over now. Tammy, she just showed you how to cook it up like Mama used to do. So go on out and have some fun. Now you're getting dinner done with Collar Valley Cooks.